All right, good Tuesday evening, everyone, on this 25th of August, 2020. Thanks for tuning into this live stream discussion on Hurricane Laura as it nears the Texas-Louisiana coast and the border of those two states uh, late tomorrow night into Thursday morning. This is just going to be a uh, quick update on what we can expect there for impacts here in North Carolina locally. Not much expected. We may have some um, thunderstorms or some you know rain showers spawned off by the remnants of Laura as it approaches uh, North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, this Saturday, but in terms of you know short-term impacts, nothing here. But I know several people on this page have loved ones in the area, or it's just good to know what else is going on, you know, around you in the weather because it likely affects you in some way. So jumping in here, this is the infrared satellite imagery for Hurricane Laura, now a strong Category One hurricane. So 24 hours ago, it was still a tropical storm exiting Cuba. Now we see this, you know, well-defined, large, symmetric, you know globe-like shape um, with the storm that you'd expect to see and up here here's Louisiana here is Texas so you can see it closing in you know gradually working from this general direction and aiming toward the border of these two states uh, over the next 24 to 36 hours and you can see the really deep colors so uh, these you know really deep convection lots of thunderstorm activity there was lightning indicated in the eye or in the center of the circulation. The eye was briefly exposed here. You can see in the middle of the loop right about here, uh, the center of circulation was right about there. And it was briefly visible in visible satellite imagery, but when the sun sets, we lose that imagery, of course, uh, due to the sun setting. So no you know, open eye right now, but it is trying to wrap that convection all the way around its center of circulation. And when it does that, it protects the delicate center of the storm and allows it to uh, strengthen and intensify, which is forecast to do as it approaches the coast of Texas and Louisiana, likely making a landfall uh, right on the border between those two states. So jumping in, uh, this is Hurricane Intel from Dr. Brian Norcross, former hurricane specialist at the Weather Channel. And this is just a good summary of information. So we have winds of 85 miles per hour maximum sustained now uh, compared to, you know, just 60 miles per hour or 65 miles per hour uh, 24 hours ago. It is moving west north west excuse me west northwest at 17 miles per hour and the pressure has dropped significantly down to 983 millibars. Remember last night's video was at 998, so it's dropped 15 millibars in 24 hours. You know, indicative of you know very strong uh, or strengthening and deepening of that storm. Storm surge warnings from San Luis Pass, Texas, to the mouth of the Mississippi River. That's a very broad area. I'll jump into the surge threat toward the end of this live stream. Uh, hurricane warnings are hoisted, tropical storm warnings you can see listed here, and again the point by point breakdown of the uh, forecast, and there's a couple of interesting things about the forecast cone that I will uh, discuss in just a moment as well in terms of uh, impacts as it crosses back over into the Atlantic Ocean. But for here, you know, you see the point by point forecast, category 1 hurricane now, category 2 hurricane by 1 a.m. Uh, tonight or into tomorrow morning category 2 hurricane by tomorrow afternoon and then on the coast making landfall forecast to be a major hurricane category 3 at 115 mile per hour winds a category 3 hurricane has winds from 111 to 129 miles per hour with gust even higher uh, but keep in mind that in this red banner here average intensity errors and in hurricanes are plus or minus one category even with our advanced technology intensity forecasting for tropical cyclones is extremely difficult and you have to um you know, remember that uh, there are still errors in the forecast. There are likely to be changes and wobbles in the forecast track. So what you see here is not exactly verbatim what's going to happen, but it's the best estimate based with the best, you know, tools we have in our arsenal. So looking at the forecast track, uh, again, all this information was reflected on that last page here. Uh, currently, you know, the wind field is becoming a little more symmetrical, so it was concentrated on the north and east side of the storm, which is traditionally the stronger part of the storm. And right now, you know, Laura has that. Um, the reason why that is is because you have your forward speed combined with it. So the storm is rotating in this direction, yes, but it's also moving. The entire thing is moving in this direction. So if you add these two, you know, vectors of motion, you have twice as much force on this side coming inland it's moving in this direction plus you know the the actual rotation of the storm so that's why if you split the storm into quadrants you know this is going to be the quadrant that has the strongest uh, impacts because it is combined with that forward motion the storm and also you know the rotation of the storm the rotational force as well so uh, again it becoming more symmetrical and very well defined on this satellite loop so we'll see how it 
does overnight. But jumping back to the track here, you can see this M indicating a major hurricane making landfall right on the border of Texas and Louisiana. Um, but again, hurricane warnings hoisted anywhere from Galveston Bay, uh, Houston down to Freeport, Texas, all the way over to, you know, past Charles, Louisiana, uh, near Grand Lake, and then all the way down here, uh, tropical storm warnings down to the very southeasternmost tip of Louisiana. So uh, taking a break here to look at some of the comments. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Shannon. Uh, good evening, Amy, Jose, Adam. My son is visiting his cousin in Leesville, Louisiana. How does it look for them? Not quite familiar with Leesville. I will uh, check on that. Let's see. Leesville, Louisiana. It is. So if you have any questions during this, feel free to um, ask, and I will feel free to jump on that. Leesville, so it's in that uh, central part. You know, they're going to, to have some significant wind. Um, the, the good news about being inland there, Cindy, is that uh, you are not going to have... So if I jump on this map. Let's see. So Leesville, you know, it's somewhere out here. Um, the good news about being inland is that you don't have the storm surge threat, which is the most deadly component of the storm, which is the most dangerous. Uh, heavy rainfall is going to be, you know, certain. And then very strong gusty winds, power outages are very certain as well. Uh, just due to the nature of having the storm at its strongest point, you know, and when the center of the storm is making landfall, the fright, the right front quadrant that we just talked about is going to be over that Leesville area. So definitely some strong hurricane force winds, uh, lots of heavy rain of four to eight inches uh, locally, up to 12 inches. I'll show you the rainfall graphic in just a moment. Um, but uh, the good news is that the storm surge threat is non-existent there doing or considering he, they are so far inland. So um Gonna be a gonna, gonna be a rough day on on Thursday morning. Definitely, uh, power outages very likely for that area in Leesville, Louisiana. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. About uh, halfway done here with what I wanted to cover, and um, just wanted to briefly show you the European model ensemble forecast. So again, this you can see if I toggle between these, they're echoing you know the same thing, which is why the National Hurricane Center is you know using this guidance to say hey this is the track we think it's going to take because it's the average of you know this track and the one I'm about to show you but you do notice that some ensembles still do have it you know going down here past you know Freeport Texas down here and then some still take it into you know Cameron Louisiana area so the envelope is still wide that's why the cone of uncertainty is the way it is remember one third of the time the center of the storm actually does fall outside of the cone of uncertainty so it's a statistical forecast uh, cone it's not based on each individual storm it's based on all the storms that have taken this path you know in the past you know based on the conditions we have this is what we expect to happen but only you know 67 percent of the time only two-thirds of the time the storm is actually falling within well the center of the storm is only falling within that cone but the impacts of course are very widespread a hurricane is not a point on a map as you can see it's a very large you know several hundred miles wide and the impacts are very far reaching. You know, this, the state of Louisiana could be completely underneath the the size of, you know, you could overlay uh, Hurricane Laura over top of Louisiana. It's a very large system, so the impacts are not limited to just this cone. If you live, you know, just on this right side of the cone in Louisiana or just to the west in Texas, that does not mean you're in the clear from any impacts. It extends, you know, far out from the center of the storm, and Laura is expected to be a large storm which is going to create a lot of storm surge. So that is our segue into this next um, segment here talking about storm surge, which is expected to be a huge concern uh, due to the storm's forward motion and due to the size of it. So you can see the storm currently here. Uh, the, the information here is a little bit off. This is a uh, resource called the Coastal Emergency Risks Assessment, and it's a little bit... Um, it's, a, it's a, an agglomeration of many different sources, so some, some of the data can be a little questionable at times, but the storm surge forecast is legitimate and it is um, solid. And you can see if we zoom in here, here we have, you know, Houston, city of 2.326 million people. Uh, and of course the suburbs, that, that's the Houston metro area. We have, you know, the Woodlands, we have Beaumont, Port, uh, Port Arthur, down here, Galveston, island of 50,000, you know, people, which has already been evacuated. Mandatory evacuations have been hoisted, so it is up to the people to, to evacuate. But of course, um, that has already been issued. So again, we have this, you know, cone of the forecast all the way from Galveston Bay through, you know, Sabine Pass, through Port Arthur. 
uh, through Beaumont, you know, several hundred thousand people live here as well. Orange, Texas, I saw a video on Twitter of people evacuating by the bus loads. Lake Charles, Louisiana, um, down through, you know, Grand Lake is about where it ends over here. The silver lining to the forecast is that outside of the coastal part of Louisiana, a lot of this is wetland where the, the highest surge is um, expected. That does not bode well for wildlife in the area, but it does um, minimize the risk to, to you know, um, human you know humanitarian impact but again you'll see a lot of these notices from the hurricane center saying this storm could push water just you know an, an analog to the storm is hurricane rita back 15 years ago in 25 or 2005 during that very active season and your uh, hurricane rita you know pushed water you know several tens of miles of inland so i mean it's, it's certainly possible and this even has you know several feet of water being pushed you know several miles inland and some forecast uh, discussions I've seen where they're warning you know that water could even uh, come up the Calcasieu River up to Lake Charles or the actual Lake Charles and the city of Lake Charles and um, you know several feet of water 30 to 50 miles inland so uh, certainly a, a concerning situation there in terms of surge that is definitely the biggest threat and if we kind of quantify this in terms of numbers storm surge warnings are up from freeport texas all the way to ocean springs mississippi uh, uh, new orleans down here in lake pontchartrain not expected to be uh, directly hit by the storm due to new orleans being on the southern side of lake pontchartrain down here red overlaying red is not a very good idea but um you know with lake pontchartrain being on the north side of new orleans that was what was so bad with katrina because Katrina, you know, the hurricanes rot rotate around this way. Well, the center came just right to where Lake Pontchartrain was literally pushed into the city of New Orleans. That's not expected to happen with the storm. It's very unlikely. But what is expected to happen is a very high storm surge anywhere from coastal Mississippi down to Louisiana, getting up to four to six feet, seven to 11 feet to Morgan City, inter intercoastal city, Cameron, Par uh, Cameron Parish, Louisiana, Calcasieu Parish. Seagram State Park, uh, Sabine, Sabine Lake, Sabine Pass, Port Boulevard, San Luis Pass, and down to Freeport, Galveston, and then Houston, you know, being in this general area over here. So, you know, definitely a, a dynamic system, and you have the hurricane force winds on top of everything, but then you have the storm surge, which is a more formidable threat. And this was actually a graphic taken from um, the National Weather Service, Houston, Galveston, Texas. And this was from a briefing from 4.30 this afternoon. It was a pretty good graphic that showed, you know, the wind is a high threat, uh, or an increasing threat as you go up in color here. The wind's a high threat. Surge is a very high threat. Rainfall, it is moving rather quickly. So rainfall and, and river flooding are minimal threats, but they're threats nonetheless. Tornadoes are always a threat in the, you know, wind tropical systems, but uh, in the north and east quadrant, it is expected to be, a, you know, a fast mover. So hopefully that is not, uh, you know, a huge impact with this but uh marine i think they just kind of lumped all the the water impacts into one here and you know marine anything coastal is going to be uh you know very dangerous with the storm as we go forward and before i kind of loop back around and summarize here i just wanted to show uh, someone asked me about the population of the area and you know i was also curious as well so this is a tool called population explorer and if we just cut off the area that is just coastal and is expected to have the worst flooding impacts, the worst impacts from the storm, at least with this current forecast. That's a population of about 816,000 people in this yellow shaded polygon. That includes Lake Charles, you know, the Sabine River, Sabine Pass, Port Arthur, Beaumont, Orange, uh, down here to Boulevard Peninsula and Galveston down to Freeport. Uh, and, you know, Houston up here, I didn't ex include that because you get a lot, a lot of people in this metropolitan area that would kind of, you know, skew the skew the numbers. But still, you know, just sum it up to a million people under the, you know, the, the scope here for the worst impacts from Hurricane Laura. So certainly a high profile weather situation and certainly something we'll have to keep watch of very carefully and see. Uh, certainly looking like a healthy storm. It's unimpeded until it's landfall. So it is expected to intensify up until landfall, which is why it's expected to reach that category three status. And alas, uh, we are dealing with a very dangerous situation for the Texas and Louisiana coast. Uh, that is all I really had for this live stream. I wanted to keep it pretty brief and just talk about, uh, you know, the, the developing trends. And then we'll see tomorrow as it approaches the coast, it still has 24 to 30 hours over uh, the open warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico with very little wind shear. So it, uh, you know, 
uh, a run at a very strong hurricane is uh, expected and is very likely at this point. And, you know, we will have to keep an eye on what Laura does and what the legacy of Laura is. But right now, an eyewall is not cleared out all the way, which is good news because that means that the storm is still trying to organize. But when the eye does clear and open up, that allows for even more rapid intensification because air is allowed to sink down in the middle and create a sort of heat engine. And again, you know, I always give this example, but uh, in terms of the pressure and wind, we are looking for deepening pressure because if you have a pot of water and you continually stir it faster and faster along the outside of the pot, what happens to the middle of the water in the pot? It goes down, right? It goes down toward the bottom of the pot. And that's because the lower pressure with the greater pressure gradient from the center to the edge of the storm, you have stronger winds. So if you have, if you're really whipping your spoon around in the pot of water, the center of that is going to depress downward. It's going to go all the way down. It's, it's you know, a depression of the water. And that's why there's deepening pressure with a hurricane. That's why the wind speeds increase as the pressure goes down because these are, you know, interlinked and intrinsically related. So that is something to keep in mind and why the relationship exists between pressure and wind, at least one way to visualize it with the tropical system. So um, again, that's all I had for this video. Thanks for tuning in. I don't see any more questions. So uh, you just stay tuned for the latest and I'll push out as much relevant information as possible. Um, Twitter is also a great place to be for tropical systems because there's more rapid fire information. So hop on over there to my Twitter account at Andrew WX Center and uh, feel free to follow me there. And otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to comment or uh, send me a Facebook message or any combination of the two. And um, I will get, I will answer your question or do my best to direct you to someone who can. And uh, in the meantime, remember to only obey official National Hurricane Center forecast products and listen to your local emergency management jurisdictions or your local National Weather Service forecast offices for official information. Uh, beware of hype and fear-mongering forecasts. Uh, just know that a strong hurricane is headed toward the Texas and Louisiana coast and uh, life-threatening impacts including storm surge, hurricane force winds in excess of 100 miles per hour, and uh, very heavy rain and the possibility for tropical spun-up tornadoes are possible as well across Louisiana. And uh, that is what we have on our hands with Hurricane Laura, and we will see how it interacts and comes our way in North Carolina over the weekend, probably spawning some showers and thunderstorms. Uh, again, uh, take care, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.